The peace concluded in 1568 between Austria and the Ottoman Empire lasted quite a long time. During this time, the Austrians managed to build a chain of strongholds on the border with the Ottoman Empire, which made it possible to protect the interior from enemy invasion. The Ottoman Empire also did not waste time and formed its own line of defense. At the same time, it should be mentioned that, despite the peace treaty, military clashes periodically took place on the border of the two states in the area of Bosnia and Croatia. In 1591, in the course of such a clash, the governor of Bosnia, Hassan Pasha, managed to occupy several Austrian forts and built his own fort in the occupied territory. The actions of the governor of Bosnia, of course, did not please the Habsburgs, but at the same time they understood that the line of defense they had built was not as effective as they thought. Therefore, they tried to delay a new war, which was inevitable with the help of diplomatic methods. In turn, the Ottomans, realizing that the Austrians did not want to start a new war, continued their attempts to seize the border territories. In 1593, Hassan Pasha crossed the Austrian border again and laid siege to the fort of Sisak, which allowed him to control the road linking Croatia with Austria. In this situation, the Austrians had to act, they hastily gathered forces from the surrounding regions and attacked the Ottomans besieging the fortress. In the ensuing battle, the Ottomans were defeated, and Hassan Pasha himself died in battle. Upon learning of the defeat of the Ottoman troops near the fortress of Sisak, the Grand Vizier of the Ottoman Empire, Koka Sinan Pasha, decided that this was a good reason to start a new war. In July 1593, Koka Sinan Pasha gathered a large army and began a campaign against the Austrians. Part of the troops Sinan Pasha sent ahead to besiege the fortress of Sisak. Meanwhile, the main army attacked Vesprem. In turn, the Austrians gathered forces and in March 1594 the Austrian army under the command of Archduke Matthias invaded Ottoman territory and immediately managed to occupy Nograd, after which it began to move towards the city of Estergom. By May, the Austrian army reached Estergom and laid siege to the city. Some time later, the Ottoman army reached the outskirts of Estergom. Upon learning of this, the Austrians, who avoided a direct confrontation, lifted the siege of the city and retreated. Taking advantage of this, the Ottomans laid siege to Komarno. The siege of the city was unsuccessful and three weeks later the Ottomans, realizing that they did not have enough strength for a decisive assault, decided to lift the siege. In 1595, Pope Clement VIII organized the Holy League against the Ottoman Empire. In addition to the Holy Roman Empire, this league included the ruler of Transylvania, Sigismund Bathory, as well as the rulers of Moldova and Wallachia, Aaron Voda and Michael the Brave. At the same time, the Ottoman Empire was not ready for a big war. The fact is that at the beginning of 1595 Sultan Murad III died. The new Sultan was his son Mem III, who hastily began to strengthen his power and army in order to start a full-scale war against the Holy League. Having gathered forces, the Austrians under the command of Mansfeld began a new campaign, which at the initial stage was quite successful, since the Austrian army succeeded in breaking the resistance of the enemy to take the cities of Estergom and Weissgrad. Meanwhile, the Ottoman army also wasted no time and began to lay siege to the city of Eger. Taking advantage of the fact that the main forces of the Ottomans were involved in the fight against the Austrians, the Hungarians under the command of Istvan Bokskai, united with the Wallachian army, were able to dislodge the Ottoman garrisons from the key cities of the Wallachians, thanks to which the Wallachian principality was temporarily freed from the power of the Ottomans. Caught in a difficult situation, the Ottomans realized that they needed to develop a new strategy in order to raise the prestige of the new sultan both domestically and in the eyes of their neighbors. At a meeting held by the Grand Vizier, it was decided that the sultan, who could not boast of any military experience, personally led the army. In June 1596, the Ottoman army, which was personally led by the sultan, began a campaign. Some time later, the main Ottoman army joined the forces that were besieging Eger. After the arrival of additional forces, the siege work accelerated significantly, due to which on October 13, 1596, Eger fell into the hands of the Ottoman Empire. 
After the capture of this fortress, the road to mountainous Hungary opened before the Ottomans. Meanwhile, the Holy League also did not waste time, having gathered a large army, which included not only Transylvanian and Austrian detachments, but also reinforcements received from the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, the Allies advanced towards Eger. Having received news of the approach of the enemy army, the Ottomans sent their vanguard to meet it, which should establish control over the crossing near the city of Karastash. The Ottoman Avant Guard could not complete the task, as it was defeated by the Austrian army, which erected a camp near the city of Karastash and took up defense. Having learned that the Avant Guard was defeated by the main forces of the Ottomans, they advanced towards Karastash, towards the enemy army. On October 24, the vanguard of the Ottoman army, numbering about 10,000 soldiers, arrived in the vicinity of the village of Karastash. Finding that only a small detachment of Hungarian cavalry was guarding the river crossing, the Ottomans immediately launched an attack. A fleeting battle ensued, during which the Ottomans, using their numerical advantage, defeated the enemy. Encouraged by success, the Ottomans began to move towards the Allied camp, but in the vicinity of the Austrian camp, the Ottomans came under artillery fire. Having suppressed the enemy with artillery fire, the Austrians sent cavalry to attack. The onslaught of the Austrian cavalry drew the Ottoman vanguard to flight. Having suffered losses, the retreating Ottomans still managed to cross the river and set up camp, they began to wait for the arrival of the main forces. In turn, the Austrians allocated detachments of cavalry to guard two crossings across the river in order to prevent an unexpected attack by the enemy. By the morning of October 25th, additional Ottoman forces arrived in the vicinity of the city of Karastash, which immediately began to form military formations. In the morning, the Ottoman forward detachments crossed the river and pushed back the Austrian cavalry detachments that were guarding the crossing. The Austrians began to retreat towards their camp, while the Ottomans continued to pursue them. Near the camp, the Ottomans came under fire from Austrian artillery and were overwhelmed by a cavalry attack. The army of the Holy League, pushing the enemy across the river, began to form battle formations. In turn, the Ottomans also began to prepare for the upcoming battle. After some time, an artillery skirmish began, which developed in favor of the army of the Holy League. Since the Austrians used more modern guns, they shot more accurately and therefore inflicted huge damage on the Ottoman army. Realizing that the artillery skirmish is clearly not in their favor. The Ottoman vizier ordered the cavalry from the left flank to attack enemy positions near the village of Karastash. The attack of the Ottoman cavalry proved to be ineffective, as it failed to break through the enemy's defenses. Therefore, the Ottoman commander sent detachments of Genissaries to help the cavalry. After the detachments of the Genissaries entered the battle, the Austrian infantry began to suffer serious losses and retreat back. The situation was critical, but Austrian detachments from the right flank came to the rescue in time, which helped stop the enemy. The detachments of the Genissaries attacked from the flank very soon faltered and, having suffered serious losses, began to retreat. Following the Genissaries, the Ottoman cavalry began to retreat. At this time, several detachments of infantry and cavalry of the Holy League tried to pursue the retreating enemy in order to inflict maximum damage on him, but as soon as they crossed the river, they were almost immediately attacked by the Tatar cavalry from the right flank of the Ottoman army. A bloody battle ensued near the crossing, but after a while the Austrians retreated to their own bank of the river. After it began to get dark, both armies retreated to their camp to rest and prepare for the continuation of the battle. By evening, additional forces led by the Sultan arrived in the Ottoman camp, and the Ottomans, having received an overwhelming numerical advantage, began to act. Having sent part of their forces to the crossing in the north in order to block it and, under favorable circumstances, attack the rear of the enemy, the Ottomans, under cover of night, began to transport their troops across the river using the fords that the Tatar cavalry had previously managed to scout. Before the start of the decisive battle, the opponents had the following forces. Under the command of the Ottoman Sultan there were about 80,000 soldiers and 100 guns. As for the Army of the Holy League, it consisted of 50,000 soldiers who had about 300 guns at their disposal. 
Early in the morning, after the opponents formed battle formations, an artillery skirmish began. Under the cover of artillery, the Austrian infantry launched an attack on the right and left flanks. The Ottomans, watching the advance of the enemy infantry, sent their cavalry to attack. The onslaught of the attacking Ottoman cavalry was unable to break through the formation of the enemy infantry and a bloody battle ensued on the flanks. During the battle, the right flank of the Austrians began to push the enemy cavalry, but was stopped by the attack of the Genissaries, who crossed the river. In the meantime, the Austrian infantry in the center reached the enemy positions and engaged in hand-to-hand -hand combat. The Austrian cavalry soon came to the aid of the infantry, whose swift attacks were able to quite quickly put the center of the Ottoman army to flight. Having defeated the enemy in the center, the Austrian infantry began to capture the Ottoman artillery, and the cavalry attacked the rear of the Ottomans, who fought on the left and right flank. The rapid blows of the Austrian cavalry put the Ottomans on the left and right flank to flight. The Army of the Holy League continued to advance, planning to capture the Ottoman camp, but ran into detachments of Genissaries who took up defensive positions near the crossing. The Genissaries fiercely resisted. Only a massive artillery bombardment broke their resistance and the Army of the Holy League began crossing the river. Once in the vicinity of the Ottoman camp, the Austrians decided that they had already won, which is why they stopped keeping the line and began to rob the Ottoman camp. Meanwhile, the Ottoman Sultan was planning to flee his camp to avoid capture, but the Grand Vizier convinced him to continue fighting. To the surprise of the Austrians who infiltrated the Ottoman camp, they were confronted by fresh detachments of the Genissaries, who immediately joined the battle. Since the Austrians were busy plundering by this time, the attack of the Genissaries came as a complete surprise to them, and they were forced out of the Ottoman camp without having time to form battle formations. At the same time, the Austrians were attacked by the Ottoman cavalry, which had returned after fleeing the battlefield, as well as by the Ottoman detachments, which had previously occupied positions near the crossing in the north. By a fortunate coincidence, the Ottomans attacked from the north and south almost simultaneously and completely unexpectedly for the Austrians. The Holy League units tried to organize resistance, but the attack was too sudden and before they could form battle formations they were put to flight. The army of the Holy League was defeated, but the Ottoman army also suffered huge losses, so the Sultan abandoned the offensive deep into the territory of the enemy and returned to Constantinople. Over the following years, the opponents did not carry out large military campaigns, limiting themselves to only small skirmishes. In 1599, the parties even tried to conclude a peace treaty, but the negotiations were unsuccessful. The war in the form of small skirmishes in the border areas continued. In 1604, in Transylvania, whose inhabitants were dissatisfied with the struggle against the Reformation carried out by the Habsburgs, an uprising broke out, using which the Ottomans managed to recapture the city of Estergal. But the Ottomans did not have the strength to continue hostilities due to the war with Safavid Iran that began in 1603, so on November 11, 1606, a peace treaty was signed that secured the territories that they controlled for the parties. This ended the Austro-Turkish War. If you liked this video, be sure to subscribe to my channel and click on the bell so you don't miss new videos.